Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the supporting documents that I submitted for my ILR settlement application. But before that, intro! Hi guys! <laughs> So welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as promised, I'm going to share with you the um, documents, the supporting documents that I passed and uh, that I submitted for my ILR application. So yes, bear with me. So this is the actual folder, folder case that I um, that I brought with me for my appointment. I'm just gonna close the door. Wait a minute. So yes, uh -huh. so we're gonna go through each of the um, documents that I passed that, that's depending on my own circumstances, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, no, what I mean is that, so I came here uh, with a working permit, so it's a chair, chair to general visa, so um, I think there are different um, supporting documents that you have to um, you have to fulfill. <laughs> What's that? You have to submit depending on your type of visa when you came in here. So in my case, it's a tier two general visa or a working permit. So um, if you uh, if we share the same. Uh, it's not street. I just moved the angle of my camera because I feel like... So if you are in the same situation as me that came here in the UK with the same visa, this video is for you. So these are the actual documents that's been scanned when I had my appointment for my ILR application. So let's go through each of these papers. So first, we've got here my life in the UK pass notification letter. Letter. So yes. <laughs> so this is one of the prerequisite or requirement for the ILR application that you have to have with you. <laughs> so you need to pass this test. So they will only give you actually one copy of this and um, for your appointment they want the original one so yeah you have to take care of this make sure it's um, kept safe so it won't get lost or else or else that's the end of the world <laughs> and next one I don't think it's not it's not in order I actually have a checklist here Let's go over through the checklist actually. I can read it one by one and show it to you as well. So mandatory document, first the passport issued by the Philippines for Mr. Fitz Fernandez Suniga. So that is me. So these are the passports. I've got the old passport, passport, and the new one. Yeah. So have, you have to bring both. So if you have, you have an old passport, um, and a new passport. I mean, if you use an old passport when you first came in here in the UK, you have to bring that with you as well. They're gonna scan that as well. So, um, I have... So my first visa when I came in here was stamped inside my old passport. Um, I don't have the uh, BRP. BRP card as yet when we first came in here so yeah that's the old-fashioned way <laughs> so I still have the copy of my very first chair 2 visa here in my old passport but the other one um, when you uh, the other one is a physical like identification photo identification card yeah apparently I have to cut it in two once um, I got my new BRP and sent it back to them. So I don't have the physical um, BRP card right now with me. But yeah, that's it. So 
That's the first one, passport. Next one, a um, letter or letters from employers detailing reasons for work-related absences including periods of paid annual leave from the UK and the Crown dependencies for Mr. Fitz Suniga. So, yeah, that's me again, Mr. Fitz Suniga. Here's the letter from my employer with my annual leaves everything actually not just annual leaves all my sick leaves um, study leaves are, are all here so yes i'm just lucky to have a, a very good employer <laughs> and they know what they're doing i just emailed the uh, recruitment um, office and yeah <laughs> they got me the letter that's it then evidence of mr fritz Seniga's immigration status in the uk so that will be the brp card the present brp card that you have and next declaration signed by mr fritz and you got to confirm consent from the home office request verification checks so when you fill in the form you will get into the part where they will show you about the consent this is the consent for the home office to verify application information so you have to put your name and address, your postcode, signature it, and put the date when you signed it. So just print it out and bring it with you. Next one, your most recent pay slip and bank or building society statement. This must be dated no earlier than one calendar month before the date of the application. So yes, I've got my Payslip, most recent one, so this is December because I did my application on January, so this is December. This, this is the most latest one I've got. And a bank statement. This is the bank statement. You can request it in your banks, in your banks, you know. And the statement must show the payment as shown on the payslip. Yeah. So yeah, when I did my application and I had my bank statement with me, my res recent pay is not in my bank statement because it's not in the date is not included yet under official under official release of the bank statement. So I asked for another uh, like uh, another evidence that <laughs> that my pay was sent on the same bank. Account account that i have so i asked for the mo my most recent transactions and i had i had it stamped so next one a document from the sponsor who issued a certificate of infor certificate of sponsorship of the lead to the, the last permissions to stay as a tier two migrant migrant so it is the letter from the employer again yeah um, and the letter should contain the nearest applicable SOC code which best describes your employment. So in my case, I'm working as a nurse, so the SOC, the SOC code is 2231 for nurses. Well, we have different codes, of course, depending on your occupation. So that's for the nurses. And next, um, your current rate of pay. Of course, I'm not going to tell you that. It's all written here as well. And... Confirmation that this is at or above the appropriate rate of for the job. You didn't know about that. <laughs> if you are currently, uh, yeah, actually it's just a confirmation of employment, of of your employment. And yes, you all need these informations when you are going to fill in the online application. They will ask for the sponsor license number. Uh, yeah, that's the one. and the soft code as well. So. That's what. So before you um, actually uh, fill in the online form, you need to have this letter from your employer. All right. So yeah, you're lucky because <laughs> I'm telling you now which are those requirements that you have that you need to have before you even uh, um, fill in the online form. Because uh, if you haven't uh, watched my video about the timeline of my ILR application, it's on the description down below as well. Because yeah, what happened to me is I started my online application on the 2nd of January and I finished it after two days because I don't have the 
write information or the letters that I needed to fill in that online form. So yes, you are lucky indeed. <laughs> Then your current biometric residence permit. So that's uh, actually the same as the evidence of immigration status in the UK. So it's, that's my BRP, which I don't have now. <laughs> and all previous passports, travel documents, or national identity cards that you have used to travel or remain in the UK. So yeah, all your passports. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all it actually. So those are the things, but I still got some here. So I also bring my, I, I, that's all that I brought during my, <laughs> um, you know, appointment. And I also brought my appointment confirmation. Yeah, there. Mm, January 8th, 2020, 12 noon, uh, Mark Lane Premium Lounge, Sopras Terre. Yeah. And I also print out the, my application form. There you go. So, um, just to clarify as well, um, we have different types of forms that we can fill in for our ILR settlement application. So, I think for all those who are ho holding a tier 2 visa, you have to fill in a set O form. Because when I search online, there's a lot of um, sets of application forms. I think depending on what type of um, immigration status you have before you even apply for ILR settlement. I encountered set M, but I, I don't know which type of immigration status is that. I also submitted my IELTS um, test report form. So um, I, this was like seven years ago. So I know this is only valid for on, for two years only <laughs> if you fill in the form well yeah i'll explain it further when i do my video about the uh, guide on uh, filling in the application form on the form they are asking for an evidence of um, english proficiency so i have this aisle so well i just um, um brought it with me and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> brought it with me and uh, as a you know what uh, 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 as a requirement. It's not actually in the it's not actually on the uh, what on the document checklist, but I just want to have it and pass it. So well, yeah, that's it. That's all the um, supporting documents that I submitted for my ILR application. So I hope this video helped you again for your ILR application. And I hope you understand all the things that I have explained. And a best of luck for all those who are applying for your ILR settlement. So yes, thank you again very much. So yeah, um, spread the word. <laughs> share this video so it could it could help some of your friends as well if they are planning to like apply for ILR settlement and uh, yes that's it that's all for today guys so thank you very much for watching and stay connected with me and uh, yeah watch out for that video on uh, guidelines on how to fill in the online the set o online form all right, so yeah, cheers mate. So see you guys on my next videos. Bye, peace out.